What's up guys? Welcome back to my second channel and today we are continuing our discussion on air mode versus idle up. I already made a video about this. Uh, check the link in the description to watch that if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but essentially, I've heard a lot of people talk about air mode and idle up as if they are the same thing and they are different terms so I wanted to kind of explore that. The long story short from that first video is that idle up is a setup technique that's carried over from collective pitch helicopters in which a throttle curve is created on the transmitter and what we use it for in our FPV drones is so that when the stick is all the way at the bottom the transmitter is still putting out a very small but not zero output so that if you have motor stop enabled for example the motors don't actually stop. People also use it to um, improve the performance of the PID controller because when the throttle gets very close to zero or even at zero um, in which case even with motor stop disabled the motors are idling um, the PID controller performance isn't all that great. I'm not going to explain exactly why that is, but it has to do with the I term getting, getting kind of dropped off. So you can use idle up to ensure that you have good PID controller performance even when you slam the throttle stick all the way down for like a floating maneuver. Air mode, on the other hand, is actually a function of the flight controller itself. Uh, it, it changes the performance of the PID controller at lower throttle range without you having to do anything on the transmitter side. So you can still send a um, minimum throttle command and your motors will still idle and the PID controller will still uh, work very well. Now again, as with the first video, I'm talking from a beta flight perspective. There are similarities with the um, with the other systems, but there are differences. A key difference being that with the KISS flight control system, you have to use air mode or idle up to prevent your PID controller from completely shutting down at minimum throttle command. You may have seen videos of pilots that have, uh, that have KISS setups uh, idle their quad and they're able to hold it and the, the motors aren't responding to any of the movements of the drone. The PID controller is actually doing nothing. That's not the case with Betaflight. Though the PID controller performance really drops off with air mode off and without idling up away from the, uh, the minimum command, it does not actually, it does not actually ever cease. Dang buddy, look at them switches. Okay, I've got my transmitter all set up. I'm gonna plug in my quadcopter. I love that startup. I let the, uh, the gyro calibrate over there. All right, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the quad into rate mode. Not air mode, so it is in rate mode. There's no auto leveling, but air mode is not enabled. The throttle stick is all the way at the bottom. We're gonna idle it, and now it is the motors are just spinning at the idle that I've set, which is 1.5%. Uh, and when I disturb the quad, you can hear the motors responding to the movement. So the PID controller is still active, unlike unlike a KISS system, where uh, when you are giving it that minimum throttle command, the motors don't respond without an idle up or uh, with air mode. Now while we are playing with the quad on the bench with the props off, don't do any stuff like this with props on. That's a great way to get injured. I can also show you that um, we can arm it. Now I can turn on air mode and you don't you don't hear the motors increase speed at all. Between and the motors don't change their idle. So air mode is not an idle. However, I do have idle up available on a switch and that will um, essentially raise the idle of the motors because it will send a command that's equivalent to about a 5% idle. So now when I switch idle up, you hear the motors actually increase their speed even without moving the stick. Um, and then when I flip it off, the motors go back to idle at 1.5%.
In my previous video, I compared two scenarios. I flew in rate mode with air mode off, and then I flew in air mode, and I was basically going up and doing kind of like these inverted hang times uh, to illustrate how much more stable air mode is than standard rate mode. What some of you guys pointed out is that I wasn't actually comparing idle up to air mode. So we're gonna take our demonstration a step further. So this first DVR clip is going to be just like before. We're going to have the quad in rate mode with no air mode and we are not going to use an idle up. So I'm actually going to go into the beta flight settings and raise the digital idle to 5% rather than the 1.5 I had it set at. Again, I've got these sticks shown on my on-screen display so that you can see uh, how the quad behaves even when I'm not moving the sticks. And just like before, we're going to take off, pop upside down, and just let the quad float there without moving the sticks. And you can see that the quad is not really stable. It bobbles around a little bit. And if I go really high and really throw it into the uh, upside down position, I mean, it just wavers all over the place really bad. Now this second clip, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back into the beta flight settings and I'm going to lower my idle down to 1.5%. And then now I'm going to use the idle up that's on the transmitter side to raise the output when the stick is all the way at the bottom to 5%. So now look at the left stick when I flip the idle up switch. You see it move up just ever so slightly because the drone is actually seeing me push the stick up even though in reality the stick is all the way at the bottom the idle up on the transmitter is tricking the drone into kind of thinking otherwise so we are just going up and doing the exact same thing again and we actually do see an improvement you guys were right to ask for this because yes setting your idle lower and then using an idle up will definitely improve the performance of your PID controller at a minimum throttle input like so even when your stick is low because you're not actually hitting minimum throttle input. So it's definitely better, but you can still see there are some shakies and the quad could still improve in its stability at minimum throttle uh, with no stick input. All right, scenario number three. I'm going back into beta flight settings once again. I am raising the digital idle back up to 5% and I am not going to use uh, idle up. So now I'm going to use air mode with an idle of 5%. Here we go, once again, popping up, flipping upside down, and it's really stable. And again, something that you can't see in the video is how much better these sticks actually feel. And now all this brings us to the reason I wanted to make these videos on this topic so that I could share with you my personal preferences in setting this stuff up. Now for a long time, and what I recommend most people do is I would just use air mode at an idle setting in beta flight that provided for good performance. Raise the idle in beta flight with air mode on to get a good stable feeling but without being so high that it was pushing me um, down, went upside down, or making the quad too floaty, right? You don't want too high of an idle. If you go into that upside down float and your idle is at like 15%, you're gonna fall way faster than you want. You wanna be able to get upside down and have really great hang time, but at the same time, you don't want your idle so low that the quad doesn't have the authority that you would want. So just using air mode with a moderate beta flight idle, usually I would end up with something like four, 4.5 or five, maybe a little bit higher, but that's, that's, what I would, that's what I used for a long time and that is still what I recommend uh, most people run because it's just the easiest to set up. Now when I was spending some time with Zachary Thayer, who goes by the pilot name A Noob, he, he was telling me that what you could do is actually mix both idle up and air mode. So even though you're using air mode, still set the idle lower in beta flight than you would actually fly with and then use an idle up on top of that. So you essentially use both. 
So now let's show you that fourth scenario where I've lowered my idle in beta flight back down to 1.5%. We are still in air mode and I'm going to flip the idle up switch. So again, you see the transmitters outputting about a 5% output even with the stick all the way down. And here we go, we're popping up, we're floating. And is it any better? Uh, you know, it's honestly really hard to say. Um, Mr. Anub swears that this performance is better, especially for specific maneuvers like when you get off the throttle really fast or something like that. Honestly, I can't tell if it's actually a little bit better or not, or maybe if it's just in my head, but that is the setup that I run. I use uh, air mode with a low idle in beta flight and then an idle up switch on my transmitter. Because uh, why not? Because it certainly didn't make it any worse than running air mode with a, a moderate digital idle. So. You know, if, if Zach says it works, I mean, it didn't, doesn't really hurt anything. Um, and maybe it's a little bit better. Again, it's hard to just say placebo, but there is kind of a, an additional benefit that I found. If you watch my flying, then you know that I love to do like skidding landings on smooth concrete. I mean, look how, look how worn down my uh, quad skids are. If you'll focus, look at that. I love like coming in and just... So now what you'll find is if you like do a skid or a wall bonk or, or any contact with the drone in air mode, the pit controller does spike and you get you get like a jerk. So like it, skidding in particular, when you're skidding on the ground, it will bounce. Now it's not as bad as it used to. Those of you that have been around doing this for a while may remember that when, when air modes first started being implemented in uh, quadcopters, the bounce that you would get from like a landing or from like a wall bounce, I mean, it was significant and dangerous, which is why you always had to have air mode on a switch because it could get dangerous if you came in for a landing on air mode. It's really not that bad. I mean, like, we're talking like, it, it just bounces like a little bit. It's totally manageable, but it's probably not what you want out of a skid, so I like to be able to turn air mode off. Then I've also found that while I want that idle a little bit higher for doing kind of those inverted floaty maneuvers, having the lowest possible idle for skidding maneuvers again helps reduce the, the bounce and kind of unwanted response from the quadcopter when I'm actually just trying to get it to intentionally contact and slide or bonk off something. So while that isn't the reason that Anub told me to use that setup, that's something I've found that I really like about it is that I can, with the flip of a switch, reduce my idle from what I actually fly with for when I want to do certain tricks like slides and bonks and things like that. So now if you're not doing slides or bonks or, or kind of contact tricks, maybe you might be wondering, should I just run air mode on all the time? And you, you totally can. You can actually just set it up so that no matter what the switch position is, air mode is on. Um, you can just fly with it on at all times. And in fact, in beta flight, you can check uh, kind of in the features area, you can turn beta, you can turn air mode on as a feature, meaning it's no longer uh, a mode to be set to a switch. It is just on all the time. So that is a way that beta flight um, allows you to set up your flight controller with just air mode on all the time. And I know a lot of people that run like that. And there's, there's really no reason not to just fly with air mode on all the time. Personally, I always like to have air mode on a switch so that I can turn it off to, like I said, improve the, uh, improve the skidability of the drone, but also for another reason, and this is like, this is a pretty unusual case. I've only ever really encountered it like one or two times. Air mode does, you know, it boosts the, the, the PID controller at low throttle. So let's say there's a scenario where there's a lot of noise in the system. Specifically, the experience I'm talking about is maybe you clip something and you badly damage a prop and now you've got tons of vibrations in the system. Your flight controller is gonna see that as movement and even when the throttle is all the way down, your motors are gonna be doing lots of micro corrections. So, I mean, you're gonna be really unstable, but what that means is the motors might not get slow enough for you to descend. So I actually have had 
one kind of worst case scenario where I clip something damaged or prop really badly. And then even with my throttle stick all the way lowered, my quad was still ascending because it was reacting to that noise. Um, in that case, I was able to flip the switch to turn off air mode and just be in standard rate mode. And then I was able to bring the quad down. Now, if your prop is so damaged that you're getting that amount of noise to the system, believe me, your quad is flying like garbage. And in this in this story I'm telling, it's not like I came in for a nice landing. I was kind of able to bring it in like this wavering control crash. I mean, it's still, it was still kind of a hard landing, but at least I didn't just have to disarm to get the quad to come down, if that makes sense. So personally, I recommend having air mode on a switch so that you can turn it off. But 99% of the time when I'm flying, I'm using air mode and idle up and I just turn off those things for kind of like bad noise scenarios like that or for intentional skids or wall bonks or or what have you. Oh, <sighs> okay. I, I hope that I've covered this topic as much as I can. I'm sure there will still be questions. This is just kind of one of those uh, techie topics that um, is a little bit confusing and hard to understand. If you do have questions, leave them in the comments. Subscribe to this channel for more uh, technical topic discussions like this and for product reviews and kind of things that I don't want to bog down my main channel which is vlogs and flight videos and, and all the fun stuff so definitely check that out as well and subscribe to that. Always appreciate you spending your time with me so thanks and I'll see you again soon.